na po tayo, yung mga babati pa dyan, ay mamaya ko na po kayo mababati pagkatapos nito, alright? So, buksan po natin ang ating Bible in Proverbs chapter 1. Oho, <laughs> sabi nung aking uh, uh, blessings to you and this ministry. Leave him higher. Thank you ma'am, thank you. Alright, ang ating uh, subject this morning is uh, consenting not to evil. Consenting not to evil. And our key text is verse 10 of chapter 1. Bakit chapter 1 tayo? Kasi July 1 na po ngayon. Uh, oh, kaya hindi natin nadaanan na naman yung uh, Proverbs 31. Kasi pag yung Proverbs 31 ng ating uh, tinalakay, ma-out of date po tayo. So we're doing this by the calendar, di po ba? So since this July 1, we're taking up Proverbs chapter 1. And Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10 says, My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. There's a little clarification we must note here in verse 10. And that is the word if. In Hebrew, the term translated if is a widely used demonstrative term im. This word is used frequently in Hebrew writing when one wishes to demonstrate a point. While it was translated often in English as if, but it means stronger than what we think it means. The word is meant to imply a hypothetical for us, a situation that is not yet but may or may not be or probably will be. Yan ang ating pananaw sa salitang if eh, di ba? Na pag sinabing if, hypothetical lang. Pwedeng mangyari, pwedeng hindi mangyari. But that is not the case here. Instead, the Hebrew im is saying that this will surely happen. And the only thing about it is when it's gonna happen. So Solomon is not saying if as it may not happen, but if as when it may happen. And it may occur anytime. That is why we must be prepared for it. So it will be good to read this like this. When sinners entice thee, consent thou not. So ayan po. We can all agree that sin has been enticing us throughout our lives. Laging nandoon ang uh, pag-alure, uh, pag-akit, that's the Tagalog word, the akit. Laging nandoon ang pag-akit sa atin ng kasalanan. And we call that temptation. And usually, pagka tayo ay uh, natutukso o naakit ng kasalanan, ay iniisip kagad natin, ito ay gawa ni satanas. Pero sabi nga nung <laughs> kapatid ko si Brother RJ, lagi si satanas ang sinisisi natin eh. Nag-iisa lang naman si satanas at hindi naman siya omnipresence. No? Uh, tsaka sino ba tayo para tayo ay pag, pag aksayahan ni satanas ng oras? Oho, baka naman hindi si satanas ang tumutukso sa'yo. Oo. Oh. Kasi siya po yung pinaka-highest ranking uh, sa forces of darkness. Eh. eh, sino ka ba para pag-aksayahan ka ng oras ni Satanas? At siya ang sinisisi mo. Pero <laughs> the truth of the matter is, ang sabi po ng Bible, kapag ka tayo po ay natutokso at naakit ng kasalanan, it's not because always of Satan and the demons. But uh, sabi po ng Bible in the book of James, uh, kapag ka tayo po ay natutokso, unang-una, wag mong isipin ang Diyos ang tumutokso sa iyo. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt He any man. But we are tempted because of our own lust and entice. Yan po ang sabi ng Bible. And when lust had conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. So, 
bago po tayo mag-involve ng uh, spiritual darkness sa ating mga lahat ng pagkakamali, tingnan po muna natin ang ating sarili. Because the blame, the blame is always in us. The accountability is always in us. O, oh, yun nga maganda kagabi sa lesson ni Pastor Ferdy. Sabi niya, pagka nagkakasala tayo, laging sinisisi natin yung iba, laging tinuturo natin yung iba, laging ipinapasa natin yung kasalanan natin sa iba. Samantalang, tayo dapat yung accountable at responsible sa ating mga pagkakasala. Kaya nga dito, ang sabi, when sinners entice thee, or when sin allures thee, consent thou not. The Bible command here is not to consent to sin, not to go willingly into it. It advises us to use godly wisdom and act according to our understanding as taught to us by our parents or by our pastors as found in the scriptures. Laging yun po kasi ang bataya ng ating magiging uh, pamumuhay na matuwid eh. Oho, because kung ang pagbabasihan natin is our own righteousnesses, wala tayong magiging pamumuhay na matuwid. But if we will base it in the Word of God, yan po ang magandang mapagkukuhanan natin ng tamang katwiran. So, here's the context summary. Summary po natin in context. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 8 to 19 is a warning against wrong association. Ingat po tayo sa ating mga kamaradiri, sa ating mga companion, sa ating mga bestes, best, uh, BFF at ano pang mga ano yan. Basta ingat po tayo sa ating sinasamahang mga kaibigan. Sabi nga po, lagi sa amin, ng aming ama, huwag kayong masyadong tiwala. Oho. Kasi baka kayo ay inaakay na o iniimpluensya na sa masama. At bago nyo malaman, ay nakaharap na kayo sa kapahamakan. So, ito po yung pinakasama rin ito eh. Solomon begins this warning by appealing to children to honor their parents. Napaka-importante, from childhood, ang bata ay natuturuan na na pumili ng tamang kaibigan at huwag bumarkada sa mga masamang impluensya. From childhood. Kaya po ang appeal ni Solomon ay to children to honor their parents' teaching. Eh, medyo pagka ito nababasa ko na tatawa kong natutuwa ko. Kasi pansinin po ninyo, ang sabi, my son, my son, yung father's instruction, wag mong baliwalain. And then ang sabi, and yung law ng mother, wag mong kakalimutan. <laughs> Napansin nyo ba yung sinabi? When it comes to father, it is instruction. When it comes to mother, it is the law. Na para bang sinasabi sa atin, talagang ang mga nanay eh, talagang sa bahay eh, parang batas eh. Di ba? Mm -hmm. Kasi ang tatay, dinadaan lang sa instruction yung mga anak eh. Pero yung mga nanay, talagang minsan kung sila ang magdisiplina sa mga anak, talagang batas. Talagang pagka iyong sinalungat, baka ikaw matokhang <laughs> o, o may kalalagyan ka pero hindi po kasi uh, ipinapakita lang sa atin dito na kung baga sila yung mga magulang natin sila yung unang-unang kinatutunan natin ng tamang disiplina pero at the end it is the word of God that is the final authority oho kaya kung yan man ay parents o yan man ay pastor, syempre we have to heed and listen to their instruction. But we, may, we better be sure that it is from the Word of God. Parents, na yung tinuturo natin sa ating mga anak ay from the Word of God at yung itinuturo sa atin ng ating pastor is from the Word of God. At ito po ang napaka-importante sa atin para hindi tayo maging uh, biktima ng masamang impluensya. So, ang ina-outline po sa atin ng Proverbs chapter 1 is the consequences of negative behavior. 
and the example you seems extreme but it meant to point towards an obvious conclusion negative behavior ay dapat po nating iwasan all right so what is solomon's godly counsel so we may avoid consenting to evil kasi it is very important that we consent not to evil sabi nga po sa pang, sa, pan, sa panalangin na itinuro sa atin ng Panginoon when he was teaching us how to pray one of the things that the Lord has taught us to remember when we pray is that we ask God to deliver us from evil and evil there stands for anything that doesn't side with God anything that is contrary to God anything that would bring the negative consequences instead of the positive favor that is coming from God. Deliver us from the power of darkness, but also deliver us from our own sinfulness. Ayan po. Wag po nating sisihin ang sisihin ng jablo. Sisihin muna natin ang ating sarili. Dahil hindi tayo natuto nitong itinuturo sa atin not to consent with evil. So, paano ba ito? Paano ba ito? Ma paninindigan natin na hindi talaga tayo sasang-ayon sa kamalian. Okay, so here's the outline that we can find in Proverbs chapter 1 para hindi tayo mag-consent to evil. Number 1 is fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Sabi po sa Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So, a person who has no fear of God has foolishness to take control of his life. Kaya po maraming mga tao ay ang buhay talagang hindi mo maipaliwanag bakit nagkaganon. Parang walang common sense, parang walang no sense at all. Diba? Kahapon ng umaga, ang ganda ng outline sa atin ni Bishop di Vega, diba? Yung sense of diligence, yung sense of direction, yung sense of determination, diba? Oh, meron, may, may sense. Eh, mahirap po pag ang tao walang sense kasi walang takot sa Diyos. At even common sense hindi na umiiral. Oh, Dapat po mga minamahal, pairali natin lagi yung awareness natin sa Diyos. May Diyos. At hindi siya malayong Diyos na walang pakialam sa atin. But He is the Almighty Father who cares about us. And He's aware of what's going on sa ating buhay every day. So, before we consent to evil, let us remember, God sees us. Sabi nga nung awitin ng mga bata sa Sunday school, God sees me in everything I do. God hears me in everything I say. ba? Nakikita tayo ng Diyos, narilinig tayo ng Diyos. At sabi nga ni David, kahit saan ako pumunta, God is there. So, let us be aware of His presence. And let us fear the Lord. That word fear means does not mean scared. That means fear means respect, regard. And with that respect and regard, be restricted in doing and consenting to evil. Alright? Fear the Lord. Number one. Number two. Follow home leadership. Follow home leadership. Alam nyo, makikita natin sa churches natin kung sino yung mga hindi lumaki sa tahanang walang leadership. Madali mong masabi, kapag itong tao na ito lumaki sa tahanan na walang leadership. O kung may leadership man, hindi niya regard ang leadership sa kanilang tahanan. Naglagay po ang Diyos ng leader sa ating tahanan. 
the first leaders that we have come to know sa ating buhay is our parents. At ang problema po minsan, pagka nagkakaroon ng uh, problema sa leadership sa tahanan, alam nyo ba kung sino ang head sa tahanan? Alam nyo ba kung sino ang pastor sa tahanan? O actually, siya ang priest sa tahanan. It's the father. It's the husband. Siya po ang head of the family. Siya po ang leader. At yung sinasabi na law ng mother is just based on the instruction that the father has given. Kaya mga misis, Hoy, <laughs> paala-ala po. Huwag nyo pong agawin o higitan o sapawan yung pagiging leader ng inyong asawang lalaki sa inyong pamilya. Kasi magkakaproblema po kayo sa inyong mga anak. Kailangan po tama ang sinusunod. God and then the head of the family, the father, your husband, mga asawa, yung tatay ng mga anak. At yung mga misis po, tagapagpatupad lamang ng batas. Ayan, uh, maliwanag na bakit the law of the mother. Hindi ibig sabihin siya yung uh, lawgiver, kundi ibig sabihin siya lamang po yung enforcer. Yung ibinigay na instruction ng ama, sundin natin mga nanay. Hindi yung nakikipagkutsaba tayo. Kamukha nitong si Rachel, nakipagkutsaba. Di ba? Uh, problema yan eh. Pagka ang nanay nakipagkutsaba sa anak, na sinabi ng anak, sige na naman, ta- nanay, ayaw kong payaga ni tatay, pero pumayag ka na kasi pag pumayag ka, wala naman magagawa si tatay eh. Huwag ganun. Alright? Kasi nagpapalaki kayo ng mga spoiled brat. Nagpapalaki kayo ng mga mama's boy na later on, will consent to evil. So, fear the Lord and follow home leadership. Sa simbahan, ang pastor ang binigyan ng Diyos ng karapatan na mag-lead sa kanyang kawan. Kaya nga ang tawag sa kanya, pastor eh. He's the shepherd of the sheep. Hindi mga dikon. Ano ba yung mga dikon? Pagka mga dikon gusto mag-lead, hindi dikon yan, demon siyan. Oh. Walang ibang pwedeng mag sa simbahan ng Panginoon kung hindi yung divinely appointed servant of God, which is the pastor. Ang pastor po ang binigyan ng Diyos ng leadership sa church. At sa government natin, yung ating mga officials, yung ating mga local government officials, yung ating national government official, sa ating pumbansa ang tawag ay president. Huwag kayong sumama sa mga rally, sa mga protesta. Sabi mo, Pastor, masama bang sumama sa mga ganon? If it is trying to topple or overthrow the government, that's bad. That's bad. Kasi sabi po ng Bible sa atin, we must follow leadership. Okay? Consent not to evil, follow home leadership. Follow His leadership. Pangatlo, fear the Lord follow his leadership starting from home and then forsake the way of the lost forsake the way of the lost talikuran po natin at iwasan po natin at wag po nating panigan ang kaparaanan ng mga taong nawawala sino yung mga taong nawawala pastor ano yan lost and found hindi kasi you know the bible describe it di ba uh, bishop de bege was talking about direction Uh, yesterday morning. Alam nyo, marami mga tao, they are lost. They are lost. Wala silang direction sa buhay. Now, how do we know that? Kasi pag sinabing direction, you know your destiny. Kung ikaw ay may direction, you know your destiny. Alam mo saan ka papunta. If you don't know for sure where you are going, then you are lost. When you die today and you don't know for sure where you are going in eternity, then you are lost. We better be sure of our destiny. San ba tayo papunta? Where are we heading? Where are we going? After this life, where are we going? Because we are 
our soul, it's immortal. Hindi po tayo ma matutunaw at mawawala na pag namatay tayo rito, that's it. Para na tayong na walang ano, entity. Hindi ho. Yung ating kaluluwa magpapatuloy. And if it's not sure of its destiny, then you might end up in the place which Jesus Christ called hell. Lost people are going there. Christians, you know this. You know that your friends are lost if they are not in Christ. You know that they have no assurance of where they are going if they are not in Christ. They are lost people. And Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost. At tayo minsan, before we came to know Jesus Christ, we were lost ourselves. But now we have been found. Kaya nga kinakanta-kanta natin, di ba? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, nakakakita na tayo ngayon. Hindi na po tayo bulag sa katotohanan ngayon. Alam na po natin ang destinasyon ng ating kaluluwa. So bakit sasama ka sa lakad? Bakit sasama ka sa gawi? Bakit sasama ka sa kung saan ang mga naliligaw na kaluluwa? ay pumupunta. Forsake the way of the lost. Huwag po tayo sa kanilang sumama, sa kanilang mga gawi at gawain. Ang sabi po sa Proverbs chapter 1, verse 15, My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. O, di ba maliwanag? Huwag mo silang samahan. Iwasan mo ang kanilang mga lakad. Hindi naman sinabing iwasan mo yung tao eh. Kasi you have to win him to Jesus Christ. Pero pag niyayaya ka niya na, oh, minsan makikipag-bargain pa sa'yo, sige, sasama ako sa simbahan. Pero sumama ka muna sa akin. Huwag kang magpaloko, hindi sasama yan sa'yo. Inuuto ka lang yan. Gusto ka lang niyang idawit sa kanyang mga ginagawang mali. Don't be fooled by these sinners, these lost people who will allure you to sin. At sasabihin sa iyo, sasama rin naman sila sa iyo sa simbahan. Huwag po. Huwag. Hindi ka matatagumpay sa ganyan, Kristiyano. Forsake the way of the lost. Fear the Lord. Follow His leadership starting from home. And forsake the way of the lost. Pang-apat, focus and listen to godly wisdom. Focus and listen to godly wisdom. Sabi po sa Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20, Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Turn ye at my reproof, sabi sa verse 23, Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, I will make known my words. Alam nyo, ang Diyos nagbibigay ng wisdom. It's free. Walang bayad. At any age, at any time, people can come to God and say, Lord, I need wisdom. Give me wisdom, Lord. Make me a wise person. Give me wisdom as I read your word. Siyempre, yung wisdom po hindi magic. <laughs> hindi yung pag dinasal mo sa Diyos, biglang, tada! Nagkaroon ka ng wisdom. Hindi. Siyempre, isa sa pinagkukuna natin ng wisdom ay yung lessons learned from our life. Kaya nga sabi, yun daw mga taong wise, graduate yan sa Hard Knocks University. Yung talagang dumaan sila sa mga trials and difficulties of life and they learn their, their lessons. Their experiences are their teachers. Pero mga minamahal, we must better teacher sa experience. At ang better teacher sa experience is the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit of God will guide us through every step of the way. Sabi po sa Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23, I will pour out my spirit unto you and I will make known my words. Yung iba hirap na hirap pa nagbabasa ng Bible, walang maintindihan. You know why? Una, baka hindi ka ligtas. Wala sa iyong spirito ng Diyos. Pangalawa, kung talagang ligtas ka, baka hindi ka kasi sensitive sa leading ng Holy Spirit. Baka masyado kang makamundo. Lahat ng iyong uh, senses ay sa sanlibutan naka focus. You have to focus and listen to God. To Godly wisdom. Listen to His voice. 
that still small voice in your heart. Read the scriptures, and while you read the scriptures, you ask the Holy Spirit of God to give you wisdom. God speaks to us even in this moment, in this time. You just have to be soft-hearted and sensitive. Sabi nga po, today if you hear His voice, harden not your heart. And last, fear the Lord, follow His leadership, forsake the way of the lost, focus and listen to godly wisdom, and fervently pray and seek the Lord. Fervently pray and seek the Lord. For us not to consent to evil, for us not to be allured and attracted by evil, we have to fervently pray and seek the Lord. This must be our daily Christian schedule, to seek the Lord. Sabi nga po ni David, when thou said, seek ye my face, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Sabi sa Proverbs chapter 1, verse 28, then shall they call upon me, they shall seek me early. Ang malungkot lang, yung mga sinasabi dito, magpe-pray sila, hahanap sila sa Diyos, pero hindi sila dinirinig ng Diyos. Sabi po rito ng Panginoon, I will not answer. Sabi po ng Panginoon dito, they shall not find me. You know why? Because they are seeking the Lord and they are praying to God na hindi naman buong-buo ang puso sa Diyos. Kasi sabi sa Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Kailangan po, when we pray fervently and seek the Lord, kailangan kasama ang puso, kailangan kasama ang damdamin, kailangan kasama ang buong pagkatao natin. Hindi yung nagpe-pray tayo pero ang isipan natin nasa ibang bagay. Hindi yung hinahanap natin ng Panginoon pero sa totoo lang, iba talaga yung nami-miss natin. When we seek the Lord, we must have our full attention and emotion and all of our being nakatuon sa Kanya. That's right. God wants our whole heart. Sabi nga po, Sa Proverbs then, My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. So how to consent not to evil, fear the Lord, follow His leadership, alright? Forsake the way of the laws at kagaya po ng ating uh, nakita, we must focus and listen to godly wisdom and fervently pray. Huwag po tayong bibitaw sa ating pananalangin sa Diyos. Pero manalangin tayo ng time kayo, ng buong puso. At makinig tayo. Listen when God speaks. And follow His leadership. And forsake the way of the lost. And fear the Lord. God bless you. This is another edition of our Healing on Proverbs Every Day. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Same time, 6 a.m. Have a great God day. God bless.